Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to day two. Looking at the subject of trials, what are they about and how do we deal with them? But before we do that, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to meet again this morning. And we pray that you bless us as we gather around your word now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so trials um, are not something that we particularly like. I remember you thinking of trials, um, you know, some of us go, some of us perhaps in the past went for football trials or for tryouts for plays or for something of a situation. And they, the trial is all about putting you through your paces, um, pushing you to limits to see how you react to certain situations and then getting a feel for who you are and whether you'd be suitable for whatever you're being trying out for, whatever it might be. That's the purpose of trials, isn't it? And if you put, translate that into what we're going to talk about today, we can see something similar in that, can't we? James chapter 1. Let's read verses 1 to 4 at the beginning of this letter. We saw something of this yesterday, didn't we? James, a servant of God and of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who he is. He, he defines himself as I'm a servant of God and a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no better way to describe ourselves, is there? I hope that's how we see ourselves this morning, servants, slaves to God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations, so it's to the people of Israel, we mentioned that yesterday, suffering, struggling, uh, trying to keep life together, iso uh, um, isolated as it were, uh, scattered out amongst all the nations, having been uh, dragged out of Jerusalem and wherever their normal homes were, having to make new lives in a difficult situation, losing all their culture, and all of this. Greetings, he says to them, first of all. So this is a letter of encouragement to those people in the early church. And then he goes straight into it. He doesn't mess about. He doesn't beat around the bush. He's saying this, look, you're under trial. That's what he says. First thing, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you, are, you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Wow. Straight into it comes James, doesn't he? He doesn't, doesn't mess about at all. Straight into it. Listen, you're under trial. Well, I'll tell you what you need to do with that. You need to consider them pure joy. And there's a couple of key words there. The word consider, first of all. To think right about it. To think about it properly. To understand what's going on here in these difficult times that you're going through. This is a letter that could have been written to churches any generation, even today. Uh, so consider it pure joy, not just the joy that the world gives, but godly pure joy. I think that's the inference there. This is that these are good. These, this is a good thing that you're going through these trials. It shows that there's some purpose in them. And then he talks about the purpose being perseverance, isn't it? Uh, that we might become mature and complete, not lacking anything. The purpose of a trial, when you're going for a tryout for a sport or something else, is to show that that's the case. Is to show that's the case to put you under pressure to see how you respond, to put you in a situation where you've got to show up, show how you cope, you cope with all the different things. It's no good speaking about it. It's no good just thinking about it. You have to show that you can do it. That's what a trial is all about, isn't it? Really, and we find the weaknesses and the strengths. And that's what God is, is doing with us. That's what James is getting across to the people here, that there's a purpose in these trials. Uh, so consider it pure joy. He's not being masochistic. He's not saying, hey, let's pretend these trials are fun. Great, let's jump up and down and thank God that we're going through all these difficult times. But he's saying, understand what they're really all about. Now, trials, James comes along later on and, 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 and he says the fact that he uses the word persevere means that he understands trials are difficult. He's not trying to say that we minimise what's going on. And, and it's important we understand that. And God doesn't minimise the situations either. So trials are painful. They're difficult. They, they squeeze us. They press us. They, they overwhelm us in many ways. And what James is, is saying, you know, he doesn't say if you suffer trials. He's saying whenever you suffer trials. Trials are normal part of life. We live in a fallen world. It's not how God meant it to be. There will be a day, one day, of rest from all of these things when we get to heaven to be with him. That's the joy that we're looking forward to, isn't it, really? But whilst we're still here on earth and before Jesus returns, we are talking trials. We are going to go through them. It's inevitable. It's, it's real. And they're visceral. And they're, they're difficult. And they're pressurising. 
But the, the, the thing for a Christian and a believer is that we believe that trials have a purpose, that we believe in a sovereign God who is in even our trials, our sufferings, and that God is working them out. So what James is saying is don't think of trials like people without Christ, without who are unbelievers think of them, where they're just, oh, woe is me. What on earth could this all be about? Isn't life awful? But remember that God has a purpose in them. That's why we, if we consider them from a godly perspective, see them from God's point of view, we realise that God is at work even in the trials that come across to everybody in this world. Now, God, of course, if he wanted to, could intervene and protect us from every trial and we could have a life that's perfect and normal. But that would be heaven and heaven isn't here. Heaven, we've got that to look forward to. So God has a purpose in our trials, to show us to be mature and complete, he talks about. In verse 12, just going down a bit, we'll look at this in a day or so, but verse 12, blessed are the ones who perseveres under trial because they have stood the test, the person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. So there's a reward coming to us, um, not just because we've persevered under trials, but that's, persevering means you keep going to the end. Keep trusting in Jesus in the middle of it. Keep trusting that God's got a purpose for it. Because one day we're going to know, we're going to receive a crown and, and, and it, it, it's going to be perfect. That's why the pure joy isn't the joy that the world gives. The joy that the world gives that we have to, if you like, that, that James is sort of referring to here is conditional on things going well. So when things, when things are going well and we're enjoying life, we're joyful. When things go bad, we're sad. We're just, we're just anything other than joyful. But pure joy sees God at work in the midst of it, in the middle of it all, doesn't it? That's what he's saying. So we need to consider that. Uh, so we, we don't pretend. We are real with our trials. We understand what they're all about. We see that there are trials there and they're difficult and we need to get around each other. And lots of other verses talk about that in Scripture. But what Paul is, what, sorry, what James is saying to his to the, to, to his you know, the people he's writing to and to us as well, is that need, we need to see our trials from God's perspective, that God is working things out. We apply what we know to him. He is producing perseverance and maturity and completeness in us. And the reason he's doing that and the reason he hasn't taken us out of trials and into heaven where there's no more trials is because he has a work to do. And uh, God's at work, not only in us, making us stronger and making us able to cope with all of these things, but he's got a wider, a bigger work he's doing in the world. And in the, uh, what God is doing is, is bringing, he's brought us to, to faith in him, but he wants to use us to bring others to faith in him as well. And the psalmist in Psalm 40, David, gets this. Because Psalm 40 is one of my favourite psalms. It's one we all know. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined and heard my cry. He lifted me up out of the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock, gave my, made my footsteps firm. He gave, a, he gave me a new song to sing. So these, you know, the psalm is saying, I've been through all these trials. This is what James is going on about. God's been in it. He's given me a firm place to stand. He's helped me be more mature. He's helped me to be stronger. He's helped me to persevere through that. And as a result, I'm on a, I've got a new song to sing. And this is what happens when God is with us. And so what he then says is the whole purpose of that is that many will see and fear and realise who God is and put their trust in the Lord. And maybe there's something in that. That is the reason why part of the purposes of our trials is that as we live out and we're real, living our real life in the real world, in the real mucky, miry, clay type world of trials and tribulations and disease and illness and poverty and sickness and relationship issues and all those other things things that everybody else goes through there's a difference with us there's a firm place to stand and it's God God is with us within those trials and so therefore we know that it's not senseless or or, or, per, or, or seemingly no purpose whatsoever these trials are from God and they're allowed to come into our lives and he, he lets them happen to us and he doesn't stop them. And he, you know, why doesn't God act? Because he wants to work through us and in us. Of course, for us, the best is yet to come. If we persevere, there's a crown of righteousness. There's a crown of glory. We're going to spend eternity with him where there will be no more trials. 
But in the meantime, God will bring us through. So the lesson for today then, James wants to get right to the point. Remember that God is in all this with you, that God is working, through, giving you strength to cope with all these trials, to give you the strength to persevere because he wants to do a work in you. And in doing the work in you, he's going to witness to the world through you of himself. And so let's, uh, we're all going through trials at the moment, aren't we? We're all going through the trial of coronavirus and being apart from one another and the worry and the fear of all of that. Some of us, very real. It's, it's affected us, some of you, of our fellowship this morning in hospital and are recovering from, from uh, COVID and, and other things as well. And trials are there. Sickness and health and things are the, the biggest things at the moment. But there's lots of other things too. Economic trials. How are you going to look at them in the light of what we've said this morning and what James says to us consider it pure joy that seems irrational doesn't it but if we if we are counting that the joy is 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 the knowledge that God is with us he's given he'll give us the strength to get through them he'll help us persevere if we consider and apply what we know of him knowing that one day all this won't be a problem anymore and we will be at rest with him in heaven what a joy that we have to look forward to don't we so let's pray that God will keep us Keep us strong to the end throughout whatever trials God is putting us through or allowing us to go through at the moment. Remembering that he is producing um, uh, fruit in us as a result of all of that and a witness to the world around us. Well, let's pray together, shall we, this morning and we ask God to help us with this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word to us this morning. And uh, it's sometimes difficult to even understand it, even as we see it here very simply in James. But Lord, we pray that you'd open our eyes, open our ears, uh, feed our faith, Lord. Help us to know that you're at work in these days and that we would consider things. We would think about things from your perspective and understand what you are doing in our day, in our time, in our life, right at this moment. And rejoice in you, even in our troubles. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.